Alice is gone. He's run off. All the dogs are acting like something is around. And he just left. I'm thinking he went to see if he could see Amos. He maybe went, if there's a bear or something around, he went after it, which can get a dog into trouble quickly, especially a young dog like Amos. I thought Andy went upriver, and I thought I heard Amos barking a minute ago from up there. There, I think that's Andy. <laughs> I see a little head popping up. How did Andy know where to go get him? <laughs> Amos, where were you? Where was he? The top of the island. A cow moose? Yeah. All by yourself? Did you see the moose? Oh yeah, he had it. He was right at the water chasing him and he was chasing it and it was oh. quite the show. I wonder, because the other dogs just all went like high tune radar, you know? I think uh, the mooses are starting to move a little bit. So it's getting that time. We probably ought to really think about getting going on the hunting here. Yeah, sign that hunting season is here. For Andy Bassage and Denise Becker, stockpiling meat and protein for the winter ahead is crucial. Now is the time to search the region for moose, a key food source that's available this time of year. To locate the elusive animals, the duo must hike up Calico Bluff to gain an overview of the surrounding landscape. You can start to see the pond there and the lake already. Calico Bluff? It's just try and put your efforts into hunting. Okay, we made it. I'm just seeing a million pictures all around me. Two glasses of Yukon, Denise. I'll, I'll start working on Ford Lake for a little bit. What we're looking for up here is anything that's not looking like its surroundings. So generally what we see right now is lighter green or yellowish color. Bull moose are going to be almost a dark black looking color from this distance. I see a dark spot right here. From the back of that cleared area, if you go left. Yep, well, that's definitely a moose right there. It looks like two to me. Yeah, good eye. That's it. That's definitely a moose. I think it'd be worthwhile to drag the love boat back there and go for it. And I'm sure he's not going to just, like, wait for us, so let's go. We are fairly consumed with our weather because our lives are driven or taken away by it. I'm going to take a look at uh, the storage closet, the generator shed, and just sort of look at the tent covers. They've been compromised enough, and I keep repairing them, but it's finally at the point where the repairs are not going to hold any longer. The gen shed and the storage closet have taken the brunt of not only Mother Nature's winds, which can get up to 100 mile an hour here, but the temperatures as well. After all these years, the material is finally said, I give out, uncle. The weather looks pretty nice, but I've got Thunderheads building and I lived out of my way. It's supposed to really start building up a storm. Lord help me if it does that. In a year where revenue is a struggle, I've taken everything I could in savings and said, right, this is the last really big chore, but probably the most important one of my career here. And it's something I don't think I've ever heard of being done by a lone person before. It doesn't mean it can't be done. It just means I gotta be smarter than the average bear. All right, I've got all the barrels moved. The wind right now is very mild but it's being drawn in from the west. So I'm gonna get the equipment and start taking it apart and seeing how do I need to lay it out? How do I need to tie it? I don't know yet. I will figure it out. 
a little bit of a rat bastard of a chore, but I looked back. There ain't nothing I can't do in my life now. I'm returning to Ninana. I built a two-story cabin there. And after living a season in Brush Canna, I want to take the cabin down to Ninana. I want to be able to move all that building material that's uh, valuable to me. This is my cabin here in Ninana. I just built it a couple years ago. There's no way to see into the future and know what opportunities are going to come your way. I never knew that Brush Canna was going to happen. I had uh, been tired of living in this uh, old rundown shack and shed that I had been living in. Finally upgraded my life and built myself a two-story cabin. I only got to live in it one winter. When the opportunity to buy the land in Brush Canna came up, I went for that. I always wanted to live in the mountains for myself, and I never even got to finish. It's what hurts me the most. Wow, it's been a while since I've been here. A little bit of a jog back around old memory lane here. I just can see one thing. I just upped and left. You know, I left a lot of stuff that means a lot to me here. It's uh, good to come back here and kind of finalize packing up some of my memories and special things. Like all this stuff on this wall was uh, pretty dear special stuff to me. So I'm going to start right now. This calendar here with a picture of my first Iditarod, Flash, and Roomba, and Coors. I look out there and there's no dogs in this yard. There's no puppies in this pen. It's a lonely place now. This is no longer home. No longer a place to keep things. Time to move on to the next chapter of my life. I'll be happy to get this job done and get back home with all this uh, awesome build material. It's a little bit of a bittersweet feel. What fills that void right now is that I have a home in the mountains. I have a place where I can put all this material back to use, so it's not a loss. Okay, I've got all my memorabilia packed up. Now it's time to start taking the cabin down. Live and then work till you die. So as long as I've got a little something better than that, I feel blessed. Fishing you shall go? Yeah. I do plan on smoking the fish we catch. That time of year, if we don't put a little bit of smoke to them, they'll stay damp. Yeah. If you guys are going to start putting on fish, I should go get you guys like a log of cottonwood. Yeah, cottonwood is always the best. It's the rainy season and it's almost winter. Camp is about ready to be put back away. And then we move to Narvik, which is a totally different river. With the limited time we have left here. Good luck. Love you. Yep. Deal. Well, while the ladies are out fishing, I better go get them some smoking wood. I'm always on the hunt for wood, that's a fact. It's a very economical way to heat things up. It's also an economical way to cook. But another thing we do with wood, other than heat with it or such, is smoke with it. I'm going to one of my favorite wood spots, which is a large sandbar. It's like an island in the middle of the Kiwalik River. And hopefully there's a piece of wood here I'm looking for. That should be good for now. I'm basically looking for cottonwood. It's real punky. When you get it lit in an ember, it continues to ember. And when it's smoking, it puts off a really good, delicious smoke. There you go. Look at that. That's one right there. And it might even be kind of dry. Well, dry enough to carry. I think this will do. I guess we'll call it. You want to try to set it right here? Yep. Good spot. One, two, three, go. Hold it tight for now. Don't let your rope, rope loose. Ready? It's yeah. already pulling? Yeah, already, I'm already pulling. With all the salmon and fishing we do, we, we always say you have to do it happy, sad, or mad, but you know, usually we do it on the happy side because we're working and working together. That's real good, Carol. Just all the way to the end of the rope. Wow. Perfect. Oh, look, 
the dog perfect timing. It's kidding. Ready to go home, dog? Come here, boy. Well, we'll see how it is in the morning. That's what we have to go by. When moose season starts, the last thing you want to do is start building a camp to get yourself comfortable. So what we're doing right now is preparing a nice campsite for hunting moose. And that way when moose season opens, we're ready to go. We have a nice comfortable spot. Me and my son Skylar are going to do this moose camp. My daughter Scarlett's taking a break. I dropped her off in Hooslia. She's having fun, her little vacation, while me and Skylar do some hard manly work out here. And we'll put a canoe there. We could drag the canoe back and paddle around during moose hunting. And we could even do that today when we're done building that camp. I know you like hunting ducks, right? Yeah, I do. I love hunting ducks. You only have a 30-30, so if we can get close enough, maybe you could try this fall. Okay. This is a fun trip to do with just Skylar, a little father-son time. And, um... It's not time to hunt moose right now, but it's not too early to set up a moose camp. If we don't get moose during moose hunting season, we could have a very tough winter without all that good meat. So it's nothing for us to go way out of our way to really build up a nice camp and just try to optimize our chances of catching a moose. Oh, there's some in the water, Sky. Oh, look at those ears. What has big ears? Moose. Yeah, a couple of moose. A couple of young bull moose. They're probably brothers. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah, watch them there get up on the shore and run off. <laughs> Even more inspiration to make a moose camp, huh? I'm going to get a moose someday. It's awesome. Okay, there's a lake right back here. We'll land right here. And we'll walk back, check out the lake, and we'll find the shortest route from where we're going to build a camp to the lake. I picked this spot because it's a good area for moose, but where there's moose, there's bears out here. Especially the big bears depend on moose to eat, and that's why I have to stay vigilant. Anytime you're out here in the woods in the summertime, you gotta watch out for bears. Go this way, go this way. This way, go this way. Bees, bees. Oh yeah, a bear been going through here digging up bee nests. Oh, another one over there. I see bear markings on the trees back here too. So if other bears coming through, they smell this, they know he's a bear that owns this place. See, he chewed up the tree on this side. See, he's his marking post that goes all up to here. He's probably around here. Because you see all those fresh marks where he dug up those yellow jackets. Much where I'm going to put the camp because there's bears everywhere around here. But it's going to be pretty sketchy sleeping at night. But where I make my camp, I'm going to determine by where is the best access from the river to the lake. And seeing this big animal trail here tells me that the moose use this spot because it's the easiest place to walk back and forth from the lake to the river. So what I'm thinking, this is a prime spot to make a camp. I'd say I got a lot of clearing to do, but not too bad. The fun begins. It's easy to think you're gonna go out in the woods and just find a nice spot, but that's not how it works. We really believe in luck in our culture, but we also believe that you have to earn that luck. And by making that moose hunting camp, I'm teaching my son Scholar a lot on how to hold your luck, and how to gain luck out here in the land. and um, all that makes for a better opportunity for the bigger picture, which is harvesting animals and sleeping good at night. And that's how you really thrive out here, is being comfortable. The whole campsite's cleared out. Beautiful view of the river right here. If any moose come out, you'll be able to see them on the bar from here. If I want to hunt back here, I can get back to the lake, put the canoe in there, a little bit of gas money, some hard work. And this is how we put food on the table out here in Alaska. I learned to stop chasing the dollar bill and just chasing my dreams. And here I am now. Now 
now I've gotten everything cleaned out inside, I gotta start with taking the roof down. I'll start really getting into a lot of structural stuff. You know, I got a big day ahead of me, but this is very valuable material to me. It's coming apart a lot quicker than it went together, and already my mind's turning about nice little projects that I'll be able to take this material and uh, start making my homestead better. It isn't that long ago in my life where I'd just sleep under a tree. What it is to have nothing but what you have on your back. You don't want to grow old like that. You want to have a place to put your roots in. My place at Brush Canna makes that all possible. Flash sheet's coming off. Then I'm going to tear all this black paper off. And that's going to go pretty quick. It's going to reveal the downstairs. Time to just start taking it all apart so I can get down to the logs, windows, and all the valuable stuff in this cabinet. All right, I got all the rafters off. My main goal right now is get down to these logs. That's what I need to build a log cabin at home. I'm gonna take the windows out, make sure that they don't get damaged because these walls are about to come falling down. I've got no problems admitting that I'm an opportunist. If the opportunity is there, I'll take it. And hopefully I can figure this out on my own. I've never done one on my own. I've never actually even heard of anybody doing a building this size on their own. He's like, no, don't close off my escape hatches, man. I have dug holes for years. Sorry, dude. It's getting fixed. Years of wear and tear have caused irreparable damage to the protective tents that cover central structures in Kavik. With a storm approaching and winter on the horizon, Suegans must quickly replace the damaged covers, or the buildings will be overtaken by the ruthless conditions of the tundra. Right now, I've got a huge thunderhead coming in. It's really not good that I didn't get it before the weather hit. This building has zero protection now. It's going to take off in a good wind. This storm's going to bring wind with it. It's the risk you take when you start doing something like this. Replacing the covers on these buildings, it's an insanely huge chore to have. Because of my mind, it's always winter's coming, winter's coming. If I don't get it done before winter hits, the raging storms of winter are going to tear them apart, and I'm done. The mosquitoes are starting to bite really hard, so I know the rain is getting imminent. So I'm going to run around here and start pulling these ropes, trying to get it over that section. We'll see. As a single person out here trying to change out a 54-foot tent cover, it's a little hit and miss. I only have two arms, but I do have winches on equipment. So what I'm doing is I'm really trying to get inches, inches, inches. The wind is coming up, the storm is coming in. I'm kind of out of time. Because if that tent gets blown off, the project is done. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Okay. My tent is just coming over the top, and it broke. Now, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try to put a loop in. Um, I'm gonna try and retie it. That could have been real ugly. I was able to grab it, that's great, but the storm is also here. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get these ropes taut and get that new tent top on over the existing one. Ugh. If I can alleviate that weak link, I think I can get this. Hell yeah. So that portion is done. The tent cover is over the tent, but the wind is here and it's gonna take this and it's gonna move it. I've gotta get rock on it and I've gotta do it now. I love it here. When you throw the gravel on it, that weight is gonna help. And a 100 mile an hour wind will tear it up if I don't have enough force to keep it on the ground.
All right, basically, that is the top of this one done. Wind was my only foe, really. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's trickling a little bit of rain right now, and it's certainly going to come in heavy in the next few minutes. But I've got several ton of gravel on each side, and so even if the wind does howl, it's not taking this, this tent topper anywhere. Still got to do the gen shed regardless. I got it on. Job well done. Time to put the kids to bed, read them a story, and get a little sleep myself. Every single... I feel like the leaves are changing minute by minute. The colors. After spotting a moose from Calico Bluff, Andy and Denise have traveled to Ford Lake to try to track down the animal. Harvesting a moose will allow them to stockpile meat for the long winter that lies ahead. I think I'm going to just probably go somewhere right over in here, pretty close to the edge of the lake, and I'll just break and rub a little with a stick if I can find one. Okay. Hunting out here on the lake is a very different proposition than hunting in other areas because sound carries so well and the wind is constantly moving. So not only can animals hear you very easily, but they can smell you very easily out here. To do to try and entice something in out of curiosity is going to be an advantage right now. brings the moose in. It's what they do with their antlers, calling for a mate. They rake their antlers against the brush or against the trunk of a tree and make those calling sounds. That's all the noise I really want to make right now. I think I'm going to head back to work and loose his and see what she's up to. You can hear that? Yeah. Okay. It's awful windy. I wasn't sure how well that sound is traveling. It's obviously heading towards the hills over there. This is definitely Grand Central Station for traffic going by here, so it's not a bad place to hang out for a little bit. Go we'll just wait it out. Lucky for me, I have my big whole family, and lucky I grew up here. I think I'm lucky. Nice day to go fishing. Let the net soak in all day. Hopefully get a tub load. Ready? Oh, yep. Yeah. Right now there's just a few fish running good. There are silvers that are good right now and some kings, but we don't really get much at this time of the year. So we're gonna go check our net and then um, see if we get any fish. Wow, the net looks good. They look like there's some fish in there. Yeah, look, it's moving right there. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Dang, that's not what we want. Oh, dang, spawned out fish. That's not what we want. Zombie fish with short teeth. Spawned out fish, which has already laid eggs and they're just getting nasty. We call them zombie fish out here. And you just take them out and throw them back in the river and they'll probably float up, die later, and then the rest of the animals will get to eat, the birds and everything else in the water. And don't come back. I hope they're not all zombie fish. Oh, here's a good one. Check this one out. Oh, wow. Woo! That's a good one. This one's nice. Wow, real red 
Yeah, I could just leave them on the boat floor. Oh, look at this. Barely even cut. Oh, what is it? Probably something there. Fishing with Carolyn is a lot of fun. Carol's usually the one taking the fish out of the net, and I'm usually on the other side of the boat trying to keep the balance. She enjoys taking the fish out of the net, and I enjoy sitting there watching her. And it's a blessing when you have your kids working with you. This might be the last one. Oh, there's another one? Yay. Right on. How many is that? Six, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Quite a few fish, huh? Eh? Real short net. Right on, eh? Ready to go? Yeah. We'll cut up our fish. So we'll just cut them all up and make them into strips, and then we'll get some uh, work going on. Play it minute by minute, hour by hour, and adapt to whatever comes our way, and make the best of whatever we can. Oh, that wind's kicking up. You're getting cold? Yeah. Well, I think uh, our timing isn't right. Like, I don't see any moose here. And so I'm going to go back out, and I'm going to kind of check the lake out and see if any ducks have landed on this side since we landed. And then why don't you build a fire and you can warm up a little bit. Andy and Denise are searching for the moose they spotted earlier from Calico Bluff. But after a long day of calling for the animal, they have yet to see any more sign of their prey. So while Denise builds a fire, Andy will turn his attention to a harvest that is more abundant in the area, waterfowl. The thing about duck hunting on the lake is uh, the ducks just, you have to be super. See a lone duck back there. Just one by himself. Kind of a long shot for this gun, but I'm gonna give it a shot and see if I can add something to the pot. There was a way I could get some warning on that. Oh, yeah, got him. Yeah. All right. Every time you go out, you learn more about where the resources are that are free. So we can go out into this country and we can shoot a duck pretty much for free, the cost of a shotgun blast. And we can power ourselves around with our own muscle power, which doesn't cost us any money. There's a lot to be said for uh, the viability and... Oh, what the hell? Holy crap, it's my canoe. It's been gone since like 2009. I lost this in the flood in 2009. What a fine, holy crap. <laughs> it doesn't look so pretty, but see if I can't bring it back out to the lake and we'll have another boat out here. That's a one in a million. Anytime we can come home with something is a win. Hey. Not only did I get a duck, I found and a found canoe. Like a canoe, canoe? A, an aluminum canoe that I had during the 09 flood. And it just disappeared during the flood and I just assumed that it got washed back in the woods and was crushed by all the ice. Wow. Oh, man, that's good. Yeah. I'm going to go look at it. Well, let's get let's something eat. to eat. We'll do that on the way back. I've been foot loose and fancy free my whole damn life. Okay, now that I've got the roof off here, before I uh, start taking down the second story walls, I'm going to be just dropping those down. I don't want them to damage these nice windows. These are very valuable to me. I don't even have a window in my cabin in Brush Canada because I knew I'd be able to use these windows. A lot of this is a little bit extra difficult because I built this cabin to last. I didn't build it to be taken down. It's really hard for me taking this cabin down. I built it. I built it nice and I never even got to finish it. I never got to finish the deck, I never got to build the proper kitchen, I never even got to trim the windows. 
which in the end, I'm glad I didn't, because I don't think I would be able to tear it down if I did that. That'd break my heart. I don't think I realized how heavy this was going to be. That's what happens when you think things are going to be easy. the whole frame attached here but man it ain't light and it wasn't easy I got uh, three more to go I don't want to be spread thin and be thinking about two places I want everything that I need here in Brush Canna and that's where I can get focused finally accomplish what I've been trying to accomplish that went a little easier than I thought it would. It's a little bit of mixed emotions because I'm tearing down something that I built to last, but uh, I'm finding clever ways of doing it and it's going well. You know, I just can't be hung up on the negative feelings. I'm having to tear it down. I got to get caught up in the positives of what I can build with this material. Now it's time to uh, start disassembling the logs. I'm starting to not see a cabin no more, and I'm starting to see projects at Brush Canna taking place. Living a subsistence lifestyle, you have to go out and get your own food, put it away and prepare it the way you want it. How goes the fish catching? Good. Good? Awesome. I scored a log of cottonwood. Right on. Let me get some smoke up. Waiting for and fishing for. Yum. Usually this time of the year it's always foggy and rainy, so try to cut our fish strips kind of thin so they can dry. Because if you don't cut them up thin, they're just going to get uh, moldy and they won't dry and get rancid because of the weather. So we're just going to rinse them, salt them. Take them and smoke them. I uh, enjoy catching my own food out here, knowing that I grew up out here too. We know how it's been processed and how good it's been taken care of. It's a pretty good feeling knowing I know how to make my own really healthy food. Good batch of fish here. Hang them and leave them here for a while. In the next few days, I can actually eat the fish right out of the rack. And then we'll pack them all up and then head back to Narvik. We're pretty much at peace. <laughs> awesome. Good job. You can tell they're still salted by the glass over them. Yeah. We're going to have lots of uh, dried fish for when we go hunting now. Yeah. Life gets played out and everything becomes a job, but when I have my kids with me, I'm reliving my youth again through them. Okay, Sky, let's get this tarp up. Just spread it out as far as you can. See, we're gonna put it between these trees here. And this is just gonna give us a nice little dry spot we could sit under or even leave our firewood here. Let's try to get this done before the rain hits. We might be using this tarp before we even know it. It's about two weeks out from moose hunting season, but it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of noise to put up a moose hunting camp. And I want to do this early so I'm not making all that noise and having to do all this work during moose hunting. We could set a wall tent here. Yeah, but this is something we could leave up. We don't even have to take it down. We don't want to put a wall tent up and walk away, bear my tear to crap of the bigger animals. And it's a lot more dangerous hunting big game. So he's going to have to stick close to me and learn all these different moves we do out here to try to get a good opportunity to harvest something. So. It's exciting for him. I learned that bears mark their territory, how tall they are, so the people don't mess around with their land. But I'm gonna mess around with their land and show how tall I am. Now we'll stand it up. Okay, tarps up. Next thing, let's put some firewood under this. 
Okay, this is a dead spruce tree, also known as standing dry. Once it dies, this becomes the best firewood you can get out here. Only problem is it's leaning right in the brush. So? I'm hoping to knock it this way. It's easier to cut it up without having to walk through the brush. I'm gonna try. If I can't, I can't. Seems like a simple job. It's a long ways from help right here, so there's no room for air, no no room for getting hurt out here. If it wants to fall this way, I want it to fall that way, so we might have to push it. Go right, stand right here. I'll tell you when. Get away from it. When it's falling, that thing can kick back. It scared me. See how you're standing right here? Mm -hmm. If this thing lands on something over here, it'll kick that stump right up into you. That's why I shoved you back. I forgot to warn you, though, ahead of time. I was a little scared there and pushed him back right away. I didn't want Scott to think he made a mistake because it's only common for a kid to be out here in the woods. Mistakes like that can really cost you your life. My mistake, I gotta think a little harder before I explain things. Hopefully he learned from that though. We all make mistakes, that one is on me. Let's see, we live to cut another tree. So let's get back to work. Just gonna limb all the branches off of it, buck it up, stack it up, and we're done with the firewood and shelter. Anytime I do stuff like this with my kids, I'm bonding with them. They also learn a lot, and they learn how to start a project and finish a project. Just start carrying it back, put it under the tarp. And like my late mom said, don't half-ass anything, so that's what I want to teach Skylar, is how to get the job done and get it done right. Oh, you feel that rain? Uh-huh. Tarp is good, it's keeping everything dry already. It's a place to put the guns. That's the beauty of having this tarp, so you don't have to hop, but we're dry. Tarp's doing its job already. Moose Camp 101. I'm done waiting. When I want something, I'm gonna go get it, and that's what I did. I've got all the second story down. I've got all my beams out. Now it's just taking these log screws out, dropping these logs down, then the hard work will begin. Putting them on the trailers, the hard work. These are amazing eight inch timbers. It can shelter you from the storm. And uh, it ain't doing me no good here no more, so getting it home is important to me. I will say about this cabin, there, I can see a lot of things that I did wrong taking it apart, and that's good. Anytime you can assess your own work and see an opportunity to do something better, that just helps me in the future whenever I do build my big dream house in Brush Canna. It's just ideas in one's head. All right, I got all the logs down. Time to start loading all this up and head for Brush Canna for the night. <clears throat> Every aspect of working with these logs, you have to be very careful in. It's not like a two by four or two by six or two by 10 that I can handle all day long. I mean, these logs weigh 200, 300 pounds. Some of them are really heavy. Nice uh, party load here. I don't really want to risk anything trying to get greedy and haul more than I than I should, because uh, you know I got a rough road to travel ahead. I'm gonna head for Brush Canna, get these unloaded, spend the night, and uh, head back here in the morning. And I'm there. I can see the end in sight. But uh, the next part's gonna be challenging as well. When I built this cabin, I felt like I was spending money. As I tear it down, I feel like I'm making money. You all. All right. Late last night, I got the storage Quonset building done. The gen shed is quite a bit larger than the storage Quonset. The cover is a lot heavier. 
I missed last night's storm for the most part, but I've got another one right now. This is the beginning to my winter. So I'm gonna tie these ropes on, heave them over like I did yesterday, and keep plugging away at it. Shoot, here comes the rain. If I tear these up, I don't have more money sitting in the bank to do it. This is everything left in my 401k to get through this phenomenally unusual year. There's a lot of weight still left to come over and, and I'll just keep going and reeling them in. And I'm betting on my seat. cover over with all of this water the weight of the tent itself was too much but I'm fully committed and I have to get it done now so what I'm gonna do is go back on the other side and with the little suitcat I'm gonna try and lift the material up a little bit more if I can get it lifted up a little bit more I can run and start hand pulling some of these other ropes I've got tears in the building. I cannot fix those while things are wet. So that means tomorrow I need a few band-aids on it, but I got band-aids and I'll be okay. A baby makes it to the front door one toddle at a time, not a leap. difference between winter and summer here is 180 degrees. They don't look the same, they don't smell the same, they don't feel the same. Well, that was a good little break. It was great. Got off the lake for a little bit. Got a duck on an 11 year old canoe. All we gotta do is see if it can float. <laughs> so why don't you pack up your gear here and I'll meet you down by the canoe. Although we didn't get any big game today, we gained a lot of knowledge. So it was a really successful experience today. It's seen better days, but it might float. <laughs> I guess if it doesn't make it home, it'll be a monument to the 09 flood at the bottom of the lake. Oh, cool. Super. It does float. Yeah, it's probably... <laughs> it's a little squash. I guess, considering how it arrived here, that's in good shape. Wow, that's great. We could put a whole moose in there and pull it home. Well, that's what I'm thinking. It may not be great for paddling, but it sure would be good for hauling. Uh-huh. Work for us is oftentimes play. It's really rewarding because everything we do for work here directly benefits us. That's the beauty of bush life. That's the struggle that a lot of people have with bush life is that it's hard physical work. Sometimes the payoffs don't come for a long time, but they do come if, you're, if, if you persevere at my life out in the bush. I put 30 years of hard work into what I'm doing right now, and it's starting to pay off, and I want to be able to enjoy it in my later years. What I want to do is live a nice, peaceful life that's me and Denise and my dogs and natural surroundings and be self-sufficient and live a much more simple life. You got a caboose this time. <laughs> yeah. The moose caboose. Something that makes me stop and contemplate is something special. And that happens a lot here. What I love about Alaska is that it is the air, it's the beauty, it's the nature you can count on. As unpredictable as the day-to-day, -day, as the climate, it's, it's, it's always there. So we've got a good gander on the lake, a little gander duck, an old canoe find, and a pretty good day of paddling on the lake. My culture onto them.
nice lake system back here. This is all a river right here. Once we got the tarp up, the wood cut, we brought the canoe off the boat and back into the lake. I want to paddle around, look for a place to do a ladder. There's places where there's a lot of moose, but there's also a lot of brush and it's hard to see them. So we do ladders out here on the trees. That gives us a vantage point to be able to look out over the flats or over the brush and try to pinpoint where the moose are at. But there's also a small game out here. He might get a chance to shoot at some ducks and that's exciting for Skylar. And it's also exciting for me and also puts a little bit of food on the table for us. And fresh meat's always good. I see a couple of ducks right there, straight ahead. When they get close together, that's when you shoot because you have a higher chance of getting them. Okay, right there, they're close together. I think you got them pretty good. Okay, grab. Ah, don't be scared. Oh, we don't want to tip up. Get your gun ready. Do you see where he fell? Yeah. Uh -huh. Next time, don't let him get away. You got to grab him, Sky. Oh, right there, right there, right there, right there. Look, straight. Look, you see it? Oh, yeah. Okay, shoot it in the head. Oh. You got it. Good job. Is that a big one? Yeah, that's a mallard. Holy smack. Oh, this is a big duck. You get nervous? Yes. I get nervous for you. On about seat duck. Good job, Sky. Oh my gosh. It's, <laughs> it's the biggest duck you ever got. Yeah. There's always messes, and I think it's easy to make mistakes when you're not thinking clearly, and that happens to everyone out here, especially at a young age. We kept paddling, and eventually he was able to catch a mallard, which was the biggest duck he ever caught, so that was exciting. I'm looking for a good place to put up a moose ladder. You see that big tree down there? That's the best place for a moose ladder because you can see all the way around. You can see down this lake, you can see down the other side of the lake, and also back into the flats. Hey, what's that over there? It's a black bear. Oh my gosh. Get down real low and cover your ears if I shoot. Stay down. I just shot at a black bear right here. It ran up right here, so I'm gonna look for some blood. I don't wanna rush back here because if he's wounded and I run up on it, it might grab me. I can see his trail through this stuff. It's easy to see his path, but there ain't no sign of blood. And it looked like I hit him. He went like this, but what I think happened is when he was on the bank like this, I shot over him and the bullet travels faster than the sound of your firearm. So blood and the way he was moving after that, I, I think he just got startled by the bullet. I really think I just made a real rookie move and I'm real disappointed in myself because um, black bear is a big deal out here. It's a lot of good meat, a lot of good fat, a lot of good bear grease. I feel bad, but I know I didn't wound the bear because there's no blood. If you hit a black bear with a 375 solid, you're gonna see some blood, so he's still living. I didn't waste any meat. Skylar got to watch me try for one, and maybe Skylar can feel like I'm more like a human to him because he thinks I'm a superhero, but I make mistakes too, so it's okay. Maybe another day, I'll see him. You know, Skylar, I don't think I hit him. We're so close to it. That thing just came right up for you. You know how I feel right now? How? I should have gave this gun to you and let you shoot. Okay, well, at least we got ducks, huh?
Yeah. All the way up and then clear out an area from top where I could look out over the land and maybe see any kind of big game that happened to be in the area. Okay, whatever falls down, just trying to clear it away from the tree, okay? Hopefully it isn't me. We're back in the Stone Age out here. You know, we gotta climb trees, we gotta think outside the box. It's just like the animals out here. They're doing everything they can to survive. And part of growing up in the woods, you learn to do everything you can to survive. At the start of the season, I wanted to spend more time with my kids, and I really accomplished that this year, and they learned a lot by hanging out with me. We did a lot of hunting, fishing, building a tree house. Not only did the kids have a lot of fun, they learned a lot, because when they learn to plan for the future and work for it, it's not only going to help them in the woods. When they go to school, when they get a job, they're going to know how to start a job and finish it, and that's what's really important, is just teaching them how to work hard and earn something out here. In another five or ten years, I'll be doing good out here, and they're going to be helping me out a lot. At this point, I'm going to go, and it looks beautiful up here. Perfect vantage point. I can see all the way down the end of this lake. I can see across in these meadows on the other side of the lake. Perfect for hunting. Spectacular view. You're only as strong as the weakest link. Determine what that is, account for it, and your job is done. All right, I brought the ladder in because last night putting the gen shed cover on, I ended up getting a few tears in the building. There was a lot of force going different directions once that rain started pelting. So before anything organizes and storms come in, I have to get material for the fix and I have to fix it. How do you say in a camp like this, what's the most important thing? Without those two buildings being saved, there is no cavic. Getting those on. This was a bit of a strange year. Pandemic going on, it changed everything. From the way we talk to each other to the way we experience things, there's a lot that I had to adapt to. The clients that I had set up for this year aren't going to be showing up. Does it mean I don't work here at Cavic? No. a lot of sweat equity into Cavic as well as the cabin. I was able to work on my survival skills. I'm most proud for sticking with it. Hey, dude. It's been a tough year. Adaptation is just taking the circumstances and changing a little bit to succeed. All right, that patch is on. Two new tents, gonna last the winter. It's really awesome to be out here in the country and it's a blessing to have your family with you by your side. The smoke is doing its thing. I got a few pieces up on the doctor. Should just make some tea? Well, that's going to be some straight-up powerful cranberry tea, huh? Yeah. That our uh, dry fish is real nice. We did pretty good. I'd say you guys did excellent. Yeah. Should be enough salmon for now. Yep. Mine, we sure did a lot of fishing and a lot of stuff this year, huh? It was fun. Can't believe we stayed here through winter, spring, and summer, and then now fall. This year, 2020, was not what I expected. COVID-19 is a lot of uncertainty. When the rest of the world is like that, it's the best place to be is out camping. We were pretty much adapting to our grandkids over those and little baby Adeline. It's just so interesting to just see my daughters have their own children and families. I'm happy for them. These are crawling. They're getting ready to leave too. And soon enough, you know, we'll be on to other places doing other things. We got a lot of nice smoked fish to take with us. Time to go north and hunt caribou. My kids, I like the fact they like the simpler stuff, like just putting up a tent, hunting, fishing. Kid come back and being busy in a whole different way. It gets you away from that nine to five stuff of the village. It's a place to be for me. Fredon, I will call it a day. Yep, call it a day. 
Good job, Carol. Thank you for your handiwork. Mm-hmm. Lots of fun. Better than being in the village. <laughs> That's for sure. Some people have a midlife crisis. I'm having a midlife success. Wow, this has really grown over over here. It's uh looks completely different. This old dog house here. Just lots of brush grown over. This was one of the nicest dog yards that I had ever had up to this point. And uh, you know, this is a walk down memory lane looking at this whole place, thinking about how much I changed this place. This used to all be forests and trees, and you know, I wanted to make a better life for my dog. Being back in Unana this last couple of days was a flood of emotions for me. It was very bittersweet. There was a lot of nostalgia. It was just uh, reliving all the things that made me prepared for the future. It shaped me in many different ways. This is where I learned how to be a good dog musher. I learned survival skills. I learned how to build a lot of things on my own. It made me a better person living here. I experienced pain. I experienced loss. I've experienced hardship in one place. And watch that grow and watch that always be mine. It's a sad sight seeing this dog yard with no dogs in it, you know? If the dogs ain't here, then my heart's not here. My heart's with the dogs. It's a little bit bittersweet to leave it all behind and say goodbye to it, but my home now is in Brush Canna. I've got everything that I can salvage from here. It's time to say goodbye. When I got on the road and knew I was heading home, I never felt so excited to be somewhere and go somewhere in my life. I feel very satisfied with what I was able to accomplish in Brush Canada this year. It requires sacrifice. It requires isolation. It requires being happy with yourself every day when you wake up. I always wanted to live in the mountains. I always wanted to live on a river. You know, my dream has come true. I have a beautiful place in the wilderness. I'm ready for the winter, and I'm ready to have the best season of my life.
Ayo, Bima. No. 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 Don't you hit me. You're such a baby. What? You're a baby. You're a baby.